If you were the only person who can save the world from a deadly virus, what would you do? The Earth is mostly destroyed, very few humans are left, and everyone is fighting each other to the death. So I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the incurable plague in Maze Runner The Death Cure. Several years in the future, the world is in ruins from a deadly virus, which turns humans into rage-filled zombies. This young man has the cure, but he's about to lose everyone he loves while caught in the middle of an all-out war. Thomas here is on a rescue mission. Him and his team spot a heavily guarded train traveling through the desert and decide it is time to strike. Thomas and the rebel leader climb onto the train, but just as they're moving on the train car, they're spotted right away by a flying VTOL escorting the locomotive. The vehicle starts shooting at his friends and chases them away. With guards coming out to stop them, the rebel leader quickly blows up the connection between carriages. This stops the end carriages in their tracks, while the guards are taken forward with the rest of the train. Only a short distance away, the train breaks. Guards start jumping off and charging back towards them. Thomas knows it is only a matter of time before they are all killed. He pounds on the wall of the carriage and hears people screaming inside. The train is full of teenagers with their hands chained up. Thomas's friends rush to cut through the side of the train with a blowtorch as the guards show up and shoot at them. Suddenly, their teammates arrive from the cab captured VTOL, and the group on the train car managed to hook it to the massive aircraft overhead. At the very last second, everyone climbs aboard, and the aircraft lifts the carriage off the ground, flying away and leaving the angry guards behind. Back at their base, Thomas's team opens the carriage and are glad the teenagers inside are okay. Thomas checks on the survivors, but is disappointed that his friend Mino is not there, since rescuing the boy had been his main goal for the mission. Mino was kidnapped by an organization called Wicked, who has taken over the world and are obsessed with trying to find a cure for the the flare virus, which has wiped out most of humanity. Despite this noble goal, they are extremely ruthless and torture teenagers in hopes of extracting a cure from them. Wicked targets those who are immune to the virus, like Mino and Thomas, and will stop at nothing till they find a cure. Later, the rebel leader makes a speech to all survivors at the base. He promises that they are working to fix the massive ship in the harbor, and that everyone can use it to sail away and start new lives very soon. The survivors are relieved to hear this after being tortured by Wicked for weeks. In private, Thomas tries to convince the rebel leader to help him rescue Mino, who's being kept at the last city, the headquarters of Wicked, but the man refuses. He wants to help the other teenagers start anew, and cannot afford another confrontation with Wicked. Despite this setback, Thomas is still determined to save his friend from Wicked by himself. Are you tired of feeling like a character in a horror movie who keeps making the wrong decisions? Constantly battling against your bad habits? Well, fear not, because Fume is here to steer you in the right direction. No need for mind-bending spells from your local witch, or a creepy neighbor who dabbles in the occult. Fume has got you covered with their innovative and award-nominated device. Say goodbye to the scary consequence of cold turkey, and hello to a new and exciting way to break your bad habits. Fume understands that not everything in your bad habit is necessarily wrong, just the bad parts. So why not remove the spooky stuff and keep the good? It's like cutting the killer out of a slasher film and keeping the happy ending. This clever device uses flavored air instead of vapor, and all natural, delicious flavors instead of harmful chemicals. It's a habit you can indulge in without any haunting side effects. But that's not all. Fume also comes with an adjustable airflow dial and movable parts that are perfect for fidgeting. So not only will it help you break your habit, but it will keep your fingers busy and your mind distracted from any creepy crawlies or murderers lurking around. So don't wait for the next horror movie to scare you straight. Get your hands on Fume and kill your bad habits in a fun and easy way. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in Accelerated Humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com forward slash how to beat or scan the QR code and use code how to beat to get 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code how to beat to save an additional 10% off your order today. That night, he starts to sneak away from the base, but runs to his old friend, Newt. The skinny teen says he knows Thomas is leaving to rescue Mino and wants to join him. Another teen, Frypan, who is also close to Thomas and Newt, comes along as well. Okay, Thomas here is completely out of his mind. Looking at how the train rescue played out, Thomas's team had six soldiers, multiple vehicles, and an entire aircraft at their disposal, and they still barely got away from Wicked. This happened in the desert too, where Thomas had the element of surprise. Three teenage boys charging into Wicked's heavily guarded headquarters with absolutely no strategy is a surefire way to get everyone killed. To make things worse, Wicked has control over two of his close friends who know everything about Thomas and how he thinks. He knows Mino is 
was already being tortured in a sick effort to find a cure. It is only natural to assume that Wicked will also not hesitate to torture him to find out everything he knows about Thomas' tactics. His former friend Teresa is also working for Wicked now, and the girl has already betrayed Thomas because she believed in Wicked's cause. Since she was willing to put her friends in the line of fire to help Wicked, she has certainly already told them everything she knows about Thomas too. That means that on top of having more soldiers, weapons, and security, the enemy already has all the information they need to stay two steps ahead of Thomas at every turn. Thomas here is the single worst person to be launching an attack on Wicked. The only way to rescue Mino would be with a stealthy approach over brute force, and the train load of teenagers Thomas just rescued is the key to breaking into Wicked. This boy Eris is already loyal to Thomas and has shown to be very smart and agile. He was previously able to memorize Wicked's security protocol and sneak through the air vents to gain information. If I were in Thomas's shoes, I would beg Eris for this personal favor. The boy's good nature and friendship with Mino will compel him to agree. Once Eris is on our side, we can send him back out into the desert near where we attack the train. The mission here is for him to infiltrate Wicked and help to sneak Mino back out. Since the escape was so panicked and chaotic, it is very believable that some teenagers might have fallen out of the carriage as the aircraft was flying away. For good measure, we can could even bind Eris's hands in a broken chain, similar to the one connecting him to the carriage to make it seem like he came directly from falling off the train. Wicked patrols will find the boy quickly enough and bring him back to headquarters. Since he's immune to the virus just like Mino, they will even place him in the same holding area as the other teenager. Once inside, Eris can try to find Mino and break him out. We could give him small, undetectable tools such as a skeleton key, sleeping pills to subdue the guards, and an earpiece to help him with this mission. At Wicked's labs, scientists force Mino to experience violent hallucinations in order to extract fluid from his brain they need for the cure. This girl Teresa is a scientist for Wicked and a part of the experiments they are inflicting on Mino. While she has chosen to work for Wicked, she's also another old friend of Thomas and Mino. Teresa looks horrified as her friend screams in pain, but continues with her work, convinced that this needs to be done to find a cure. Meanwhile, Thomas and his two friends reach a tunnel along their journey. The teens start to drive through it and spot an infected human in their way. All almost immediately. As they slow down to try and sneak past it, their jeep is suddenly overwhelmed by more of these zombies. The jeep speeds away from the growling horde, but only makes it a short distance before hitting an obstacle and flipping over. The teens are okay, but now have to make it on foot. Hearing the horde catching up to them, Frypan shoots a few zombies, but they just keep coming. They run down the tunnel and are horrified to see another horde charging at them from the other end. The boys are completely surrounded and severely outnumbered. With their ammo quickly running out, there's no way they can get out of this on their own. Suddenly, Suddenly, another vehicle rams through the horde and stops beside the teens. Their friend, Brenda, throws the door open and tells them to come on board. The friends scramble onto the truck as Brenda's friend, Jorge, drives them out of the tunnel to safety. Brenda and Jorge left the rebel base to join their friends after they noticed they had sneaked off. After driving for some time, the group arrive at an overlook and spot their destination. This is the last city, Wicked's headquarters, and where their friends are being held prisoner. The people living inside are all loyal to Wicked, hoarding resources and living luxurious lives while leaving everyone outside to die. The last city is surrounded by high walls and guarded by heavily armed soldiers. Jorge explains that no one can get in. Nonetheless, they decide to drive down for a closer look. Arriving outside the last city, the group see that the streets have become overcrowded slums. Everyone looks dirty and miserable. They are all struggling to get by with what little resources Wicked has left for them. A group of insurgents drive down the road. They catch the crowd's attention and shout that Wicked is the cause of their suffering and must be taken down. This is met with huge cheers from everyone around them. At that moment, Thomas spots some wicked aircraft flying overhead, but there's a problem. These crafts have detected him without him knowing. At Wicked headquarters, screens alert the soldiers that Thomas is among the masses right outside their city. This man Jansen is the lead soldier and most ruthless of them all. He sees Thomas's face on the screens and commands his men to get the guns online, determined to kill Thomas at any cost. Thomas and his friends approach the gates to the last city. There's already a crowd of people there waving signs and throwing rocks, demanding that Wicked save them and let them in. Okay, unless everyone on Wicked somehow lost all their memories, walking right up to the gates is a huge mistake. Thomas should know that he's literally the most wanted man on Earth at the moment. Wicked wants to capture him for both his role as the leader of a rebel group and as a test subject since he's the teenager with the strongest immunity to the virus. Even if he doesn't realize that the planes have spotted him, 
he can see that there are dozens of guards and cameras along the gate. These are all trained to scan the crowd to look for threats, such as weapons or known insurgent leaders, meaning it is literally their main job to spot and recognize Thomas the moment he shows himself. If any reconnaissance needs to be done near the wall or in places patrolled by Wicked, only Brenda and Jorge should be allowed to do so. They are both not on Wicked's radar at all and can easily pass as regular civilians living in the surrounding slums. Furthermore, driving along main roads and especially going through the tunnel were equally stupid. Thomas knows that Wicked sends out routine patrols by land and air all the time, specifically to prevent their enemies from getting to them. It makes sense that a bottleneck like the tunnel on one of the only roads towards their headquarters would be under heavy surveillance. This is an especially huge risk considering that Thomas's team pulled off a successful ambush on Wicked's train very recently, sending Wicked into high alert. Thomas here should also know that the infected prefer dark places and the tunnel will be their number one vacation spot during the day. He's extremely lucky that his friends showed up in the nick of time and that Wicked are also huge morons who did not bother to monitor the tunnel. All these odds are simply too large to overcome. No one even knows if Mino is even still alive or not or what condition he will be in. It's heartbreaking to consider but this may very well have come to a point where Thomas has to see that one friend's life is now worth risking his own and four others. Everyone has a chance to escape for good and start a new life if they return to the rebel leader and help him with the plan to sail away. If I were Thomas, I would recognize that this is best for everyone and that the most I can do for Mino now is to try and trick Wicked into giving him a comfortable life. Using radio broadcasts, I would fake a series of transmissions into the area around the last city, spreading information that rebel scientists have found they have managed to find a cure and that this cure can only be created using the fluid secreted by the brain of immune teenagers when they are kept happy and comfortable. This rumor will eventually get picked up by Wicked, where they will try replicating the results since they are desperate. It's a long shot, but this is really the only thing we can do for Mino without risking everyone's lives. Newt senses that something is wrong and looks around, spotting a group of masked men approaching them from behind. The group tense up and draw their weapons, ready to be ambushed. At that moment, the massive gates to the last city start to creak with loud mechanical noises. It sounds terrifying. Something like this has never happened before. Huge turrets emerge from the city gates. Without warning, they start to fire missiles into the helpless people below. Chaos erupts instantly as everyone tramples one another, running for their lives. Thomas's group take cover down an alley, but do not manage to get far. They are suddenly surrounded by the masked men, who grab them all and force them into vehicles. The masked men take the friends to their hideout, where there are dozens of others like them. One of the men removes his mask, and Thomas recognizes him immediately. It's Galley, a former teammate who never got along with Thomas and tried to kill him when under the influence of poison. Thomas attacks him, but Galley insists that they are on the same side now. Realizing he has no other choice, Thomas agrees to work with Galley's group. Galley takes Thomas and his friends to see his leader. This badly disfigured man is the head of the insurgents, the masked men Thomas has seen all over the city. The disfigured man explains to Thomas that he wants to destroy Wicked too, and that they can help each other against this common enemy. Thomas asks if the man has a plan to do this, and the man confirms that he has, but it will need Thomas in order to work. Thomas is skeptical, and the man doesn't make things better by proclaiming that he will not be letting Thomas's friends go as a way to ensure Thomas remains loyal to them. That night, Galley takes Tommy and Newt right up to the concrete wall circling the last city. They sneak in and climb to the top of the wall. Using a telescope, the boys see that the wicked headquarters in the last city is a heavily defended fortress swarming with soldiers. This is where Mino is being held. Galley urges Thomas to have a look to see why he's so vile to their plans. Glancing through the telescope, Thomas sees Teresa working in her lab inside the headquarters. The plan now becomes clear to Thomas. Galley's team believes that he's the only one Teresa cares about enough to give them an end to the Wicked's headquarters. Thomas refuses to use Teresa to break into the city. Hearing this, the usually mild-mannered Newt is furious. He slams Thomas into a wall and yells at him, reminding the young man that Teresa helped Wicked capture Mino in the first place and that Thomas should be focusing on saving Mina. Newt is surprised by his own outburst and walks away, leaving everyone to stew in a stunned silence. Okay, Thomas here is being way too trusting when he has no reason to be. While both Galley and the insurgent leader may be genuine in their offers to help, Thomas should not be too quick to go along with their plans until he has a better understanding of the types of people they are and what their agenda may be. From the statements his followers use to rile up the crowd, the insurgent leader is clearly bitter about wicked hoarding resources and wants his people to get their fair share. A man like this might be motivated to trade Thomas to wicked in exchange for more privileges for his people. Thomas's old rival, Galley, also also presents a completely separate set of issues. He has known ties to Wicked and has clashed with Thomas in the past. Thomas should remember that his team previously
mysteriously left Galleon for dead in a facility full of Wicked soldiers. It is a very real possibility that Wicked took him in and helped him to recover. This means that Galleon may now be secretly working for Wicked to spy on the insurgent leader. Thomas should pretend to believe Galleon and question him on how he survived and how he managed to escape to join the insurgents. If his rival attempts to brush off this line of questioning or acts out of character, such as in pretending that he has a close friendship with Thomas, these would be clear signs that he's lying about his intentions. Thomas should also approach one of the low-level insurgents for more information. If Thomas can strike up a conversation with one of them, he can casually bring up how Galley came to join their group. This will be a bit tricky since if Galley is indeed lying to him, Thomas has no idea whether the insurgent leader or his men are in on it too. The rude and cold insurgent leader may consider his foot soldiers nothing more than cannon fodder and will not loop them into any secret plans him or Galley may have. The only way to extract useful information from the man he speaks with would be to set up a ruse. Instead of asking this low-level man about the version Galley gave him, Thomas should make up his own version of how Galley joined the insurgents. If everyone has been instructed to lie to him, the other guy will think this is Galley's cover story and agree with the fake story Thomas gives. Or if the guy is honest, he will correct Thomas and offer the accurate version of how Galley joined the insurgents as he remembers it. Galley has been trapped in a maze till just a few months ago, so most of the other men should be more senior than him and remember how he joined. If the story matches what Galley has told him, Thomas will know that his rival has indeed reformed and that he can now be trusted. The next day, Thomas goes to look for Newt. He finds his friend sitting on a roof looking quite sad. Newt apologizes to Thomas for snapping at him. He rolls up his sleeve to show Thomas that he caught the virus. The veins on his arm are already dark and swollen, and the infection will only get worse as it spreads to his body. Thomas is devastated for his friend. He assures Newt that they will find a cure for him. The skinny teenager tells Thomas not to worry about him and to keep focus on saving Mino. He urges Thomas to do everything he can to rescue their friend, even if it means using Teresa to break in. Inside the last city, Teresa arranges to meet with Mino. The guy looks terrible. After being put through that much pain by Wicked, Mino is ragged and barely coherent. Teresa pleads with him to understand. She explains that what they are doing to him is part of a greater purpose and that finding a cure will help him save thousands of innocent lives. Mino is not convinced. He shouts that she's a traitor and slams Teresa onto the table. The soldiers rush in and restrain him, but not before the teen grabs a sharp object off the table and hides it in his clothes. Later, Teresa leaves the lab and heads home. While at a crosswalk, she spots Thomas across the road and is shocked to see him here. Thomas walks away, but she follows him to a quiet shelter within the city. The young man finally emerges and walks up to Teresa. He asks her if she regrets betraying them by telling Wicked their location and getting Mino captured. She tells him that though she is sorry, she still believes it was right and will make the same decision again. Thomas signals to someone behind her, and Galley suddenly appears and slips a hood over Teresa's face, capturing her. Taking her to a more private location, Thomas asks Teresa to cut out the trackers Wicked has implanted in the back of their necks, and the young woman agrees to help. While working to remove the tracker from Thomas's neck, Teresa says she's surprised to see that Brenda is still so healthy. She asks how he has been managing to replenish her serum. Confused, Thomas tells her that Brenda only took one serum months ago. The young woman is stunned to hear this. She explains that serums do not work that way and that Brenda should have succumbed to her infection weeks ago. Thomas grows uncomfortable and refuses to continue the conversation. At a top floor within Wicked's headquarters, Jansen enters a room overlooking the city and finds the head doctor having a drink. The woman looks defeated and has Jansen concerned. She tells them the virus has gone airborne and is already inside the city. Anyone not already infected will get infected and die within a month. Jansen pushes her to set up another, more exclusive safe zone and to step up experimenting on the immune teenagers they have locked up. The doctor is unconvinced. She tells Jansen there's no point anymore and will not continue with her work. Okay, things just got downright hopeless. Now that the virus is airborne, there is literally no way to stop the infection from reaching everyone on Earth. Thomas here has even missed some vital pieces of information that can prevent all of this. With Newt getting infected, this means that the virus is now evolving to spread in ways other than zombie bites, and that this new strain of the virus can infect people previously thought to be uninfectable. In contrast, Brenda has been bitten months ago and has stayed healthy after being injected with a serum made from Thomas's blood. This contradicts the effects of all known serums, which have shown to wear out after a few weeks. Thomas should have realized that this abnormality is no coincidence, and that there's something special about his blood in particular. Newt has even told him to his face that there's a difference between people who are just resistant to the virus like Newt, and people who are outright immune like Thomas. Immunity works because natural antibodies within a person's blood and tissues bind to invading viruses, allowing white blood cells to destroy them. This is clearly what has happened with Brenda, because she went from infected to healthy, meaning the viruses in her body have been eliminated. 
Wait, if the antibodies in Thomas's blood are the only one in the world capable of killing the virus completely, it is worth a shot experimenting with that theory. If Thomas has a suitable donor blood type to Newt, they can try performing a small transfusion of Thomas's blood to Newt. If the skinny boy starts to show signs of recovery, then Thomas will know that a complicated serum manufacturing process is not needed. His blood can act as the cure if transfused directly to infected people. If I were in his shoes, I would draw out a full pint of my blood for research and testing. Then, I would keep half the sample for my team to work with Teresa on testing. If we are able to manufacture a serum in mass on our own, that would be a huge step forward. It might seem silly, but I would actually send the other half pint to Wicked. Even though they are our enemies, Wicked does genuinely want to cure the virus and has access to infinitely more scientists and resources than our team. The blood can be kept fresh if sealed in an airtight bag and packed into a cooler box with ice and insulation, keeping the temperature around 39 degrees Fahrenheit. I would attach a note to the cooler, explaining how this is the blood of someone completely immune to the virus and how serum created from this blood has managed to permanently cure an infected woman. This cooler can then be left near the walls surrounding the city. Teresa can advise us on how to get in touch with the head doctor, where we can give her a call instructing her to pick up the sample. Gally starts to question Teresa. She willingly tells the group everything she knows about Mino's location and about the other captured teenagers. Teresa also explains that they will need her thumbprint to access the building. Gally threatens to cut off her thumb, but Thomas pushes for Teresa to come with them when they break in, which she does not object to. Without anyone noticing, Teresa grabs one of the bandages stained with Thomas's blood off the table and takes it with it. Sometime later, Thomas, Newt, and Gally dress as wicked soldiers. They escort Teresa back into wicked headquarters. No one notices that anything is wrong since they all recognize Teresa. Newt starts to feel the effects of his infection. He gets dizzy and starts to cough, needing to rest for a moment before he can continue. With Teresa's help, the group make it into the bunks and free the other teenage prisoners, but Mino is nowhere to be found. Teresa checks the database and notices that he has been moved to the medical wing in a separate part of the building. Gally stays behind to help the kidnapped teenagers to pick up the serums, while Thomas and Newt escort her there. Things only get from bad to worse when they're intercepted by Jansen and his men along the way. During a tense standoff, Teresa pushes the boys into the medical wing and triggers an alarm to shut them in. Jansen can't get the door open and is furious with Teresa, accusing her of helping them get away. She argues that all she did was help Jansen trap them inside and the man seems to buy her story. Teresa reminds him not to kill them as they're immune to the virus and vital to finding the cure. Thomas and Newt run through the medical wing, taking out the soldiers rushing at them from all directions. Just as one of the soldiers soldiers has them cornered, Mino ambushes them from behind and throws the man through a glass panel. Mino has managed to escape on his own and is relieved to see his friends. The three of them quickly try to make their way out, but find guards hunting them down at every corner. With no other choice, they lock themselves in a room just before Jansen can reach them. The friends are completely trapped and are running out of time fast. Jansen's men start to saw through the metal, and it's clear that the door is not going to hold out for long. Desperate for another option, the friends smash the room's windows and look down. It's a terrifying 10-story drop to the reflecting pool underneath. They're reluctant to jump, but know that there's no other choice. Taking a running start, the teens leap out the window and plunge into the dark water below. After a short moment, all three emerge from the surface gasping for air, but alive. Jansen breaks into the room and stares helplessly down at them. Thomas flashes a signal to the window above, telling the men exactly how he feels about it, and Jansen walks away in disgust. Okay, this plan was a huge disaster from the start. Since neither Thomas or Newt is willing to kill Teresa, setting them off alone with her means that their team has just lost all leverage. This young woman is a known traitor and was directly responsible for giving Wicked the team's location and allowing them to kill many people in the past. This means that Thomas and Newt are completely at her mercy and will be captured immediately if she chooses to yell out for help the moment she sees Jansen. To make things worse, Thomas knows Newt is infected and is at risk at turning on them at any time. It's not even a question of loyalty. Newt Newt might be Thomas's most trusted friend in the world, but the virus will turn him into a violent monster at any point. This is not something that Newt can control at all. Thomas's feelings for Teresa and Newt's infection makes them the exact wrong people to send on this mission. Someone like Gally, who Teresa might actually believe is willing to kill her, or Brenda, who Teresa knows has no loyalty to her, would be far better choices to be her escorts. Since the team did not know what Teresa herself is thinking, the only way to ensure she sticks with the plan is if she's with the people she genuinely believes will hurt her if she steps out of line. If I were Thomas, I would even take it a step further. I would point out that the best option is actually to keep Teresa as a hostage and use her as her backup leverage against Wicked. In terms of infiltrating the facility, she's really only useful for her access cards and her fingerprints. The insurgents working with us have a citywide presence and many resources. They will be able to give the team some basic supplies to replicate Teresa's fingerprints. Teresa could then be asked to press her thumbs into any moldable putty we can find, leaving grooves of the putty which correspond with her fingerprints. Liquid latex and then be 
spread over the molds, creating duplicates of her thumbprint when it cools. Fingerprint scanners have been known to work through latex gloves, and Wicked no doubt uses the best quality scanners which can detect prints on latex. It is very likely that we can slip the duplicate thumbprints over our thumbs, then use them to access Wicked headquarters without Teresa. As for the girl, she's too viable to bring back into the city and risk her signaling for help or escaping. If the team sneaking into Wicked fails, we can still use Teresa as a bargaining chip and offer to trade her for Mina. The doctors have other teenagers to experiment on and might be willing to let Mino go, but Teresa is one of the main scientists working on the cure and is irreplaceable to them. If Thomas approaches someone more rational, such as the head doctor, instead of someone with a vendetta against them like Jansen, Wicked is likely to accept and let Mino go. Gally takes the other teenagers to the parking garage where Brenda is waiting with a bus. They help the teens get on board, but are worried that neither of them has heard from Thomas. Gally tells Brenda to stay with the teens while he goes to find Thomas. After he leaves, Brenda spots some soldiers nearby and tells everyone to duck down. The soldiers get suspicious anyway and start to advance on the bus. With no other choice, Brenda starts the bus and speeds out of the garage, ramming into the soldiers. The passengers scream in terror as she races their vehicle to the outskirts of the city. Wicked soldiers drive after them, staying hot on their heels the entire time. Brenda finally reaches a roadblock as the soldiers pull up behind her. They're trapped. The woman tells everyone else to stay put as she exits the bus with her hands up. The soldiers demand that she drop the gun in her hand, but she instead fires it into the air. It's a flare gun. A bright red flare flies into the dark sky above the standoff, and in the control room of a crane, Fry Pan sees it floating above the city. He's ready for Brenda's signal, releasing a massive hook and dropping it right beside the waiting woman. Brenda attaches it to the front of the bus and rushes back on board. Before the soldiers can get to them, the hook pulls up and swings the bus into the air. Fry Pan swivels the whole bus over the city and gets them to the other side of the wall. He releases the hook and drops the vehicle outside the city. The teenagers are frozen in place by the horrifying fall, but are relieved to have finally escaped the last city. Gally rejoins with the three boys still trapped in the city and updates Thomas on the situation. When they try to move, Newt starts coughing uncontrollably and has trouble even standing up. Outside the city, the insurgent leader rallies hundreds of his followers to launch a final attack on Wicked's territory. They are sick of Wicked's inhuman treatment of them and are prepared to die to take their enemy down with them. The disfigured man leads the charge, riding a vehicle full of explosives at full speed into the city's gates. It explodes on impact and sends Wicked's first line of defense crumbling down on a massive ball of fire. With the wall breached, the massive insurgents storm the city. A violent firefight breaks out between the Wicked soldiers and the insurgents on the streets. Trying to find a way out of the city, Thomas's group is caught in the crossfire. Explosions go off all around them, and things look bleak for the friends. Sensing that he will not be able to make it out, Thomas radios Brenda, telling her to save herself and to get the rescue teenagers to safety. Brenda hears an aircraft approaching and runs to greet it. It is Jorge and the rebel leader, who has finally come to help the survivors with their cause. Brenda tells Thomas not to give up, and that she will be coming to him. Okay, this is a massive stroke of luck that Thomas needs to make the most of. With the insurgents attacking, all wicked soldiers are now fighting for their lives. He and his friends are no longer their main priority and have completely fallen off wicked's radar. All they need to focus on now is to lay low and not be mistaken as the enemy by either party. If I were Thomas, I would advise my friends to drop our guns and tactical gear right now. Both sides are fighting with missiles and rockets, blowing everything up in sight. Our small handguns will no longer be of any use up against these weapons anyway. The explosions have also no doubt caused many casualties along the streets. We can stay behind cover and sink up to some dead bodies to steal their clothes. Using these civilian clothes to pose as regular people fleeing from the battle will be our best chance for survival. Both the wicked soldiers and insurgents will see us as three more of the dozens of terrified citizens running for their lives and leave us alone to focus on each other. This even works well with Newt's current condition as it will just look like we are carrying an injured friend away from the battle, making us seem less threatening. While the first instinct might be to run towards the giant hole the insurgents just blasted through the city walls, this would be a terrible idea. This is currently the only known entrance point into the city, and will be overrun with insurgents charging in to attack the city. The group's best bet would be to push down the instinct to leave through the main gates, and instead try to remain undetected and get to the outskirts of the city. Residential areas not closely associated with Wicked will make the ideal hiding spot, as these will be among the last buildings targeted by the insurgents. Thomas can then call for help from one of the many allies he has outside the city's walls. Instead of radioing Brenda to say goodbye, he should have put her to work to save him and his friends. The woman is clearly in love with him and would stop at nothing to save his life. 
he should ask Brandon to instruct Frypan to climb into the crane above the city once again. He could then act as lookout for Thomas from his high vantage point. The hook attached to the crane is still intact after the bus rescue. This means that Thomas can repeat the same rescue plan with his team, with Frypan swiveling the crane and dropping the hook near where they are hiding. Once their lifeline has been deployed, all the boys need to do is grab onto it and let Frypan lift them up and over the city's walls. When the boys try to move Newt toward the pickup point, they fight him in bad shape. The infection has reached his face and black fluid oozes from his mouth. The infection has progressed and it's clear he'll become a zombified crank. After an emotional goodbye, Mino and Gally run ahead to get help for Newt. Thomas stays with him and begs him to hold on. Newt takes off his necklace and gives it to Thomas before losing consciousness. Making their way through the city, Thomas tries to drag his body onward but isn't strong enough. Suddenly, Teresa's voice echoes throughout the entire city. Using the bandages stained with Thomas's blood, she has invented a serum that destroys the virus entirely. She uses the city's broadcast system to tell Thomas about her discovery, and asks him to come back so she can make more serum with his blood. Before Thomas can make a decision, Newt's body gets up. The infection has fully taken over. Newt gets up and attacks Thomas. As the boys struggle, the real Newt re-emerges for a short time and begs Thomas to kill him. After a short struggle, Thomas reluctantly kills his friend by stabbing him in the heart. Heartbroken, he he looks down at his friend's body as Brenda arrives. Instead of going with her, Thomas walks away, determined to find Teresa and help her make a cure. He goes to the Wicked headquarters where he sees the head doctor. She tells him that Teresa is telling the truth and that Thomas's blood can save everyone. The woman is suddenly shot in the back by Jansen, who then quickly knocks Thomas out. When he comes to, Thomas finds himself strapped to a gurney in the lab. Teresa has extracted his blood and is using it to make a cure serum while Jansen watches. When the serum is ready, she gives it to Jansen. The man shows Thomas that he's now infected and seems desperate for a cure. Before he can inject himself with the cure, Teresa smashes a beaker over his head and knocks him out. She starts to untie Thomas, but only manages to get one of his arms free before Jansen grabs her and throws her across the room. Thomas frees himself and helps her fend off Jansen. The pair grab the serum and escape down the hallway as Jansen shoots at them. They make it to an observation room for the infected test subjects and lock themselves in. To Teresa's horror, Thomas has been shot in the stomach. He can barely walk and collapses to the ground as Jansen breaks in. The soldier starts to hunt for them in the dark room, but can't see anyone besides the zombies locked in their glass cells. He eventually finds Teresa and demands that she tell him where Thomas is. The man doesn't even seem to care about the serum anymore and just wants revenge on the teenager. Just as Jansen is about to shoot Teresa, Thomas throws a piece of lab equipment at him. The man ducks out of the way easily, but the glass behind him shatters and frees the zombies from their cell. They pounce on Jansen immediately and tear the man apart as Thomas and Teresa make their way out of the lab. Okay, things are completely out of hand and Teresa should never have let it go this far. If Jansen is willing to kill the head doctor, who is a high-ranking leader within Wicked, this means the man is completely unhinged and desperate. Even if he didn't tell her, it is not hard to guess that the man is infected and totally out for himself now. This means that he doesn't care about maintaining his ties with Wicked and has no reason to keep Teresa alive after she creates the cure for him. This means that her deciding to help him create the actual cure was a big mistake. She should have realized even though the man has a gun, she had the upper hand by far within a lab setting. The lab contains strong anesthetics and hallucinogens. Teresa has seen firsthand that these powerful drugs were used to subdue Mino and put him in a trance-like state. Knowing this, she should have drawn Thomas's blood and gone through the motions, making a big show of mixing up a cure for Jansen. It doesn't matter what she puts into it, so long as it contains a huge dose of the anesthetic to knock the man out. In the same way the infection affected Newt, Jansen will be experiencing symptoms like coughing and dizziness. This will leave the man impaired and more prone to act rashly. In addition, he has always underestimated Teresa and thinks he has the upper hand, since he has a weapon and Thomas is tied up. Teresa should know that these factors will cause him to not even check any serum she gives him and will go to administer it to himself right away. Once the man is unconscious, Teresa can tie him up to make sure that he can't get back up and surprise them. Even though the man now has a grudge against her and Thomas and is exactly the type of person to hunt them down for revenge, he will not remain a threat for long. Within hours, the infection will completely take him over and leave him incapable of complex thought. Jansen will be reduced to a vicious zombie operating purely on instinct and will forget all about any unfinished business he has with Teresa or Thomas. Teresa can then inject Thomas with adrenaline to wake him up. She will need his strength and tactical skills, along with her knowledge of the layout of Wicked's headquarters in the city, in order for them to escape before the entire area is destroyed by the insurgents. 
Teresa can even take any chemicals and equipment she needs to create the cure elsewhere before they leave. Once they are far away and safe from both Wicked and Insurgents, Teresa will have all the time she needs and a steady supply of Thomas's blood to properly develop a cure for the virus. Thomas and Teresa make it to the roof and find that the building and entire city around them is now on fire. The Insurgents have destroyed everything and skyscrapers are crumbling to the ground. The stairway behind them explodes in flames too, trapping them on the roof. With no option left and Thomas badly injured, the pair share a tender moment, kissing as they accept their fate. At that moment, Jorge's aircraft rises over the ledge of the building. Thomas's friends have come to save him. They fly the craft as close to the roof as possible, but Thomas is too injured to jump. With a final burst of energy, Teresa throws Thomas onto the aircraft. Before she can climb on board herself, the entire building gives way beneath her. Thomas yells for Teresa as the girl plunges through the roof and into the fiery rubble below. Heartbroken, exhausted, and badly hurt, Thomas passes out as the aircraft finally flies up and away from the city. Sometime later, Thomas wakes up in a hut on the beach. This is the survivor's new camp, where his remaining friends are staying. Mino and him share a hug, thankful they're still alive. That night, the survivors have a party celebrating their escape, and it's there that Mino hands Thomas the necklace Newt had passed to him before he died. Thomas opens the pendant and finds a note from Newt inside. In his last letter, Newt explains how much Thomas's friendship meant to him and praises Thomas as their leader. He asks that Thomas continue to keep everyone safe and thanks him for being a true friend. At dawn, Thomas takes a walk on the beach and looks at the horizon ahead. As he digs in his pockets, he finds that he still has a vial of Teresa's serum, the cure that can save mankind. But what do you think? How would you be Maze Runner the Death Cure? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, check out the How to Be playlist for more videos like this, and don't forget that from now on, we'll be uploading on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Until next time, have a damn good day.